One of the many important implications of the special theory of relativity was time dilation. So time dilation is the idea that time will slow down for an object that is traveling with a very high velocity relative to its stationary counterpart. So this is known as time dilation. And time dilation is given by equation 1. So delta t represents the time Time that has elapsed for the stationary observer while delta t naught represents the time that has elapsed for the observer found inside that moving object where the object speed is given by v and c is the speed of light in a vacuum so once again delta t represents the time elapsed in the stationary reference frame while delta t naught also known as the proper time is the time that has elapsed in the moving reference frame. So basically, time is not an absolute quantity. Time is different in different reference frames. Now, this is not the only quantity that basically changes when we change reference frames. Length and distance are also different in different reference frames, as we'll see in the following thought experiment. So, let's suppose we have an observer that gets inside a spaceship and that spaceship leaves Earth and travels to a distant planet and back. Now, let's suppose that the second observer is found on Earth and the Earth is assumed to be stationary. So, the Earth is an inertial reference frame. Now, to the observer on Earth, the time that has elapsed for the entire trip is given by equation number two. So delta t, the time that has elapsed for our observer on Earth is equal to L naught, the entire distance there and back for the observer on Earth, divided by V, the velocity of that spacecraft. So once again, equation two gives us the time elapsed for the observer on Earth. Now, what about the observer found inside the spacecraft? For the observer inside the spacecraft, the time that has elapsed is less, and this is a result of time dilation. So this time, which is known as the proper time, is given by the following equation. So we basically take equation 1, we rearrange it, and solve for delta t, not the proper time. So the proper time is equal to delta t multiplied by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So equation 3 gives us the time elapsed that is measured by the observer found on that spacecraft. Now, because the velocity that is measured by that person on that spacecraft does not actually change, it stays the same, it stays at V, but the observer in the spacecraft measures less time, that basically means that the distance that is measured by the observer on that spacecraft is also less. So let's suppose L represents the distance that is measured by the observer on that spacecraft. Then that implies L, the distance, is equal to the velocity that is measured by the observer V multiplied by the time that is measured by the observer in that spacecraft given by the proper time, delta T naught. So let's take equation 3 and let's basically replace delta t naught with this entire quantity and that's exactly what we do. So v multiplied by delta t multiplied by this. Next, let's go back to equation 2. So let's take delta t and replace delta t with L naught divided by v, which is what we do in this case. So notice v appears on top and bottom. We can cancel that v out. v is the speed of that spacecraft and we get the following equation. 
So L is equal to L naught multiplied by the square root of Y minus V squared divided by C squared. And let's label this as equation 4. So this equation is known as the length contraction equation. And L naught is known as the proper length. So L naught is basically the length that is measured by the stationary observer on Earth, while L is the length that is measured by the person, the observer, found inside that moving spacecraft. So basically L is the proper time, and notice that because this quantity is always less than 1, that implies that L is always less than the proper length L naught. Now, it basically applies, so this equation basically applies not only to the distances traveled by this spacecraft, but also to their length. That is, the length of that spacecraft moving with very high velocity will also be less relative to the stationary counterpart. And the direction of decrease of the length is in the same direction as the motion of that object. So, once again, this equation gives us the length contraction given by L. And L0 is known as the proper length. Now, this equation applies to not only distances that objects travel, but also to their length. That is, the length of an object moving relative to a stationary observer is measured to be less in the direction of motion as compared to the stationary object.